Louisiana verse all y'all Jared Roser here with STM student body president from what I understand and a guy who also plays a little bit of uh, sports over there for the Cougars uh, Carter Domang new uh, newly announced that he'll be playing some college basketball at uh, UL hometown Louisiana Lafayette with the Raging Cajuns uh, finishing up a high school career with state MVP state championship MVP MVP um, Cougars winning four straight state championships, had a chance to be a part of uh, the football state championships as well. And so uh, it's, it's kind of tough to list all the accolades because it's so many. But, Carter, appreciate you taking some time away from uh, the busy schedule and the celebration today of, of the college decision to chat about some of it, man. No, man, appreciate you having me. Definitely. Take me through some of, I guess, the, the day today celebrating uh, you and – and another half dozen fellow student athletes over there at STM had a chance to make some, some college decisions and, and put some pen to paper and all those things. Uh, what was the day like overall, just kind of enjoying it? Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, it's just a really special day, you know. I mean, every kid that's ever picked up a ball is, you know, at least thought over and dreamed of playing college athletics. And for, you know, six of my buddies to get a chance to lock in their spot to do it today, and then there was four of my guys in the spring that did, or in uh, the fall that signed. And it's just surreal, man, you know, because we've been playing with each other and talking about this forever. And so for our dreams to finally come to reality is just a very special thing. How close-knit, I mean, as, as we talk about how many of y'all are having this opportunity, how close-knit of a group have y'all been? Um, and, and a lot of y'all are multi-sport guys that have had a chance to, to be together throughout multiple sports seasons. Um, but you kind of, you feel that, that bond and that camaraderie anytime you're around you guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, we're a really close group of guys, you know, and that's our bond was built through sports and through competition from the time we were probably five or six years old playing bitty basketball, flag football, T-ball, all that stuff. You know, the core group of us has been competing against each other for the last 10 years. And so, uh, you know, you gain a certain respect when like, like uh, our buddies, like when we would beat each other in games, you know, you gain respect for them. And then for us to come all from different schools to come and play with each other at STM, just strengthen that. We had trust in each other to do it. And, you know, we're just, uh, you know, we're brothers for life. And that's going to, a bond's going to stick with us past high school, past college. And uh, we're just going to continue to keep up with each other. And I know all the guys that are going to go to college are going to do great just because of the hard work they put in, the competitors that they are. And that's all – we all learn that from each other and from the coaches at STM. So it's just really great. Beyond some of those relationships, when you look at your time at STM and the amount of success that you guys were able to have as teams as well as you individually, do you – are you able to kind of put that all into complete perspective yet? Or, or what's that like to try and – really kind of wrap your your mind around some of the things that y'all y'all did accomplish no I mean I'm still trying to wrap my head around us you know for the last uh like year or so when you're like entering your senior year you're kind of like looking back at the last three years you've here and the this coming year and you're just like wow like we've been doing this for so long we've been like in this for so long and just like to look back now at everything we've accomplished you know like I've had countless conversations with my boys like Besh, Bouillon, uh, Jane Shelvin, you know, like Arsenal, all of them just looking back and being like, wow, like, y'all remember when we were just like little kids watching STM kids do this. And now we've just, we said we we're going to do it from the time we were little and we've exceeded our own expectations, I think. So it's just crazy. There have been, and I guess particularly focusing on the basketball side, there have been some great players that have come through and, and some in recent enough years that they probably were some of those standouts that y'all were watching as y'all were in grade school or middle school or whatever. Were there any that really kind of caught your attention at a young age that you looked up to and thought, um, you know, this is a guy I can kind of model my, my game after or, or that I, I could kind of see myself following those shoes or just kind of looked up to in sort of a role model type uh, aspect? Yeah. Um, so like, uh, you know, like as little kids going to games, most of the time we're just messing around on the sideline. You're on the side or on the sideline of football games, just in our own state championship game playing there. But uh, I'd say guys I looked up to at STM and football, you know, like uh, Trevor Beggy, Tiger Best, just watching those guys go off and like Nate Cox and Will Bellamy, you know, like you idolize those guys. 
And uh, in basketball, I remember watching Trey Touche, Bo Broadhead, and then Jonathan Cece. I still vividly remember him hitting the like a game winning shot and uh, the sun kiss, game winning free throws in the sun kiss. And I dreamed of doing that, you know, when I was at that point. And then the next year to play alongside him and just learn from him was great. But uh, that's the great thing about STM. You know, there's always there's guys before you that have done it and that you can learn from that are willing to teach you. And I'm glad that we were able to be those role models for the younger kids at STM now. And I hope that they'll do the same and that the legacies will just continue at St. Thomas More. Yeah, your name is very clearly on that list of some of the greats to come through now. And um, I mean, Coach Broussard talks so highly of of you and Jaden and what y'all have meant to the program. And um, I mean, just as le- both as leaders in terms of some of the intangible things, as well as your uh, your talent and skill uh, as players. But when you realize Carter Domingue is is on that list of of some of those guys like CC and and Trey and company. What is that like to to hear people talk about? Yeah, it's crazy, you know, just, uh, just, I mean, that's really it. I just thank God for it every day, you know, because like you said, and hopefully this is just the beginning of it, but just looking back and thinking of how good those guys were and that people think of me in that regard and that some of the alumni guys like say that I was like such an outstanding player and among the best ever dude at STM is really just, I'm really grateful that people do that and that I have the chance to do that at this stage, you know, because STN basketball is well known around the area. And I was uh, extremely grateful that I had the chance to put on the jersey and just compete, you know, and just honor the guys that did it before me, I guess I'd say. How did the Cajuns opportunity fall into place? Take me through some of just, I, I mean, obviously, them being right there uh, down the road or up the road, there's, there's going to be a familiarity. They're going to be certainly aware of a guy playing at your level uh, at, at a school like STM in town. And you're certainly going to be aware of, of what they're doing um, over on campus, but where did sort of that relationship and bond start to build from particularly more of like a recruiting standpoint and, and them saying that there was an opportunity for you to stay home. Yeah. Um, so I guess I like never really like thought of his reality until like probably, uh, like last year in the spring, you know, they told me they wanted to bring me on an official visit and I was like, wow, like that's crazy. You know, like mid-major division one basketball is like dream playing the basketball. And then, uh, you know, with COVID and everything, we weren't ever, weren't ever able to, but, uh, you know, they kind of talked to me then. And then in August, coach Marlin called me and was just, uh, we talked for a while and he was like, yeah, like this year we're not going to have a scholarship for a guard, but uh, we want to offer you preferred walk-on spot. And so I was like, obviously really appreciative of that. And then, uh, but like, I was just kind of like, just like, you know, live, like going my senior year and just like not really thinking about it too much, but Coach Marlin kept talking to me, Coach Brock Morris kept talking to me and they were just like, look, Carter, like we, we believe in you. Like you're, a, you're the player that we want in our program. You have the winning attitude that we want. I think you, you'll fit great in the culture here. And uh, ultimately, I think I will, and they've given me a chance, and hopefully I can, you know, earn my spot and uh, just help the Cajuns win. And you've played it at such a high level at the, the high school level, but, I, you know, I was saying on radio out in Lafayette this morning, as you continue to focus more on basketball, this is something that, that Danny Broussard and I talked about a week or so ago as well, that we feel like there's that opportunity for you to take these very big strides still. Um, I mean, once you get on campus and are working with that college program, what do you see of kind of where your game is and how much more ceiling you still have to reach how, how much more you feel like you can continue to just, uh, I mean, whether it be body wise, skill set wise, whatever, uh, continue to, to reach even higher. Yeah. Yeah. Uh... I mean, I think as long – until I hang out my shoes and my jersey, there's always going to be stuff to improve on. But, uh, I mean, like, I've been a multi-sport athlete my whole life, so I've never really played basketball year-round. And so I'm excited to get the chance to do that because, you know, my game – I think my game will skyrocket from here without taking breaks of playing football and baseball and other sports all the time. But, uh, you know, I'm really excited just to – my skill development, you know, we've never really had – like, I've never really had, like, people focus and drill me on skill development. And so the coaching staff at UL is great on that with guys like Frank Bartley and Alfred Payton just making like crazy jumps while there. And that's one of the graphic, like they kind of talked about that when uh, they were like uh, recruiting me and stuff. But uh, 
I'm excited just to do that, you know, work on my game, my shooting, ball handling, passing, everything that involves the game. And then athletic wise, you know, um, just excited to, just to get in the weight room. They have fantastic facilities there from what I've seen online. And it's just, uh, I'm excited to improve my body, athleticism, explosion, uh, just things like that that can only help my basketball game. There's that familiarity there with you and the, the coaches, and I'm sure you and a lot of the guys that are still on that roster um, and, and a lot of the, the fans probably are aware of you from from seeing you play some big high school games. But for folks that will be awaiting you to join that, that Cajuns roster and that Cajuns program, what would be something that you hope they know about you or maybe something that they don't know about you yet that you, you feel like is kind of um, a key piece of who you are that, that you would hope, you know, Carter Domingue's coming and, and this is this is who I am, whether as a player or a young man sort of thing. Yeah. Um, you know, as a uh as a you know young man, I guess I'll start. Uh I just love to help others. You know, I love being involved in my community. I've done it at St. Thomas More with helping out with our option students, like we're downs kids and special ed kids and the helping out in campus ministry. And I just love to get involved, you know, Catholic, love to get involved in my church. And as a basketball player and competitor, I'm just a winner. I love to win. I don't. I think I hate losing more than I like winning. But uh, I've done it at St. Thomas More, and I don't plan on stopping winning at UL. And so I'm gonna take the preparations needed, put all the work in, and hopefully it'll pay off on the court. How excited was was Coach Broussard that you're gonna be staying close and be pl- and be playing for the Cajuns, where he obviously likes to spend a lot of time and go take in some of those games and root those guys on. Yeah, he's excited. Uh, you know, he's, he's stoked all, to. He's always excited, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> always is excited. But uh, yeah, no, I know he's gonna be excited. But uh, just to watch me play some more, like you said, and uh, you know, he's a big Raging Cajun guy. He loves going to games. It's his alma mater. But uh, you know, I think he's really excited, and he thinks I make the right choice. I I know I asked you some about kind of putting your career into some sort of perspective, and and how that how that process is going. Cause it's still, I mean, still kind of winding some things down, but the opportunities that you've had to play basketball for a guy like Danny Broussard, that is one of the winningest coaches nationally in high school basketball and same story on the football field with, with coach Hightower. Um, what can you tell folks that haven't been around those two guys about what it's been like to, to work under them and fantastic staffs, obviously that, that they have in both of those programs. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they're both amazing coaches. They have some of the best staffs in the state, you know. Um, but it's just crazy, like, the things that I take for granted because, like, those are – I've only had outstanding coaches my whole career and historically winning coaches my whole career. So, like, looking at some of the guys with, like, some of the guys when I go play travel ball or, like, and stuff like that or just, like, talk to guys from other programs. I'm like, wait, like, how did you know that? Like, I thought that was just, like, common knowledge of basketball. But, you know, it's just, like – and football, for that matter, and just, like, the constant – like you should know that you have to work for things. You know that it's going to take grind and effort and that, you know, because I always says the difference between winning and losing is this much. And uh, I've taken that to, you know, mean a lot of things. And so like just looking at other guys and realizing that how special it is that we have, how lucky I am to be a basketball and football player that have two Hall of Fame level coaches. is just, I think I take it for granted sometimes. And I think I'm starting to realize that now as I'm going to leave it. And just in hindsight of realizing all the knowledge that they've spread to me. You'll have a, a pretty good coach waiting for you in the college level, though. Yeah. Yeah, I'm excited. Give me a, uh, a Danny Broussard story that uh, that will make folks, me or or otherwise, laugh. I, I know it's, it's kind of a, a never-ending <laughs> list of yeah. interactions, but give me something that, uh, that as a player you, you saw from Danny through the years that um, – has kind of stuck with you as a funny moment that it that is able to be shared on the YouTube channel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh so I guess it was probably my uh, my freshman year. We're uh we we're actually playing against Jared Butler in the uh in Sophie B. Wright tournament championship. And so it was at uh we're playing against Riverside. I'm in the game where uh it's like neck and neck the whole game. They go up they go on a run, we go on a run. We're going at each other, and, like, Jonathan CC is going off. Jared Butler's obviously going off. I think he had over 20. But uh, we're down by, like uh, – we're down by, like, nine. And uh, I think CC 
either it was either me or CC hit two free throws. And we're down by seven with like 35 seconds, or like maybe it was like 10 seconds left or something like that. And uh, Coach Danny calls a timeout right after we make the free throws. And like it's like obviously no chance, like pretty much no chance we can win. And like although like like the Riverside parents in the stands are like like uh, like what are you calling timeout? Like quit it, man! Like you lost, just take it. Then he like puts his clipboard down, looks at stands like I'm drawing up a seven point play right here. <laughs> but uh, you know it's just those. That's one of the stories that's always found funny. But uh, it's just you know Coach Danny doesn't like to lose, and he was, I think he was just trying to prolong his loss and just push it off as long as he could. But uh. I mean, that's one of the few games we've lost since I've been here. So, uh, i say he does a pretty good job of avoiding losing. <laughs> yeah. That uh, that timeout story, I think, has, has grown to maybe, like, borderline legendary status now where everyone around yeah. the state basketball circles talk about that. Yeah. Uh, what was it like for you to watch, you know, a guy like Jared that, that you matched up against to go win a national championship or to see some of the things that CeCe's doing where he's now heading off to his – his next level of college um, and, and just guys that you've had a chance to either play with, play against what, or watch very closely to, to go on to that next level. Yeah, it's crazy. Like looking like, especially the Jared Butler thing, that's just nuts. Cause like we played against him twice my freshman year. I remember like I took a charge to foul him out of the game one time. And I was just like my freshman, I was like just a freshman playing basketball for like probably like my 10th game or so for varsity. And I was just like starstruck, you know, that he was committed to Bama at the time. And I was like, wow. But uh, it's just crazy to think about like he just won a national championship and I'm watching TV now and I'm seeing guys that I played against in AU that are like playing in the tournament. And I'm like, like, but then I think that also just proves, I think for me, like that's one of the things that, it gives me confidence as a basketball player because I've known – I know that I've competed against these guys. I know I've done well against these guys or at least held my own against, like, some of these guys. So I know that I compete at the highest level and I know that I can win at the highest level. So I think for that perspective, it just kind of, like, gives me confidence and just – and if they're doing it at that level, it motivates me to do better. So it's just – and, like, CC, you know, he's a stud. So just to watch him work every day really taught me the work ethic that I have today. I think he was a big part in that. Gonzaga could have used you about 10 days ago if you, if you could have gotten Jared Butler out of that game. Um, a, lot of, <laughs> yeah. a, lot, a lot of those guys, like Jared and Mark for Baylor, obviously, they had the, the two McDonough 35 guys for Houston. There's a few guys that have been able to stay in state and do some big things. Javante Smart obviously comes to mind, or Skylar Mays, who's now off with the Hawks. Yeah. But for you to have an opportunity to move just, I mean, a couple miles away and go continue representing – uh, not just, I mean, you, you and your family, but the state at the next level and your hometown, Lafayette. How how much have you thought about that? How significant is that to you? Yeah, it's great. You know, just to represent the boot. Uh, I'm excited. You know, I've been living here my whole life. I always thought it was one of the best states. And now I get to wear Louisiana across my chest. And so uh, it's going to be crazy. You know, I'm really excited for it. I don't think it's really sunk in yet that I'm going to be representing Louisiana at that level, but uh, I'm really excited for it. You know, just show, show the nation again who what Louisiana is made of. There you go, man. Well, Carter, congratulations on all of it, and, and thanks again for taking some time to chat about, uh, about some of it here. And, uh, yeah, I, what else can I say but congratulations and thanks. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me. It's been great. You got it again. He's Carter Domingue, a standout multi-sport guy over at STM in Lafayette. Uh, wrapping up his career there for the Cougars and uh, now making official that he'll be heading on to the next level uh, right there in town and play for the Cajuns in Lafayette and Coach Marlon and company uh, over there at the Cajun Dome. And for Louisiana versus all y'all, Jarrett Roser.